Well, hello everyone. I have been asked to review a Besteker or B E S T E K E R Besteker Besteker, a full HD camera camcorder. So this is like a camcorder that you can get for super cheap, and I'll put the price and the link to it uh, in the video description. So the model is HDV 601S. It says US Golden. I'm going to be brutally honest about it. Now, there's there's some things. Initially, when I was first asked to do this video, and I read the specs, there were some things that intrigued me. First of all, the still image is 5120 by 3840. That is big. That is big for a photo. It's a 20 megapixel photo. It also shoots 4608 by 3472, which is 16. It also shoots 12 megapixel. It shoots 8 megapixel various different ones. Of course, that's going to eat up your card different. You know, the larger one's going to uh, use up more card space. It does use an SD up to 32 gigs, it says. Now, the video, this was what was interesting. So, it shoots really big photos, but the video, it shoots 1080p, 1920 by 1080 at 15 frames per second rather than 30 or 24. Typically, you want 24, right? But it does shoot 720p uh, at 30 frames per second, which is perfectly fine. A lot of people, the web still uses a lot of 720p. I see it all the time on YouTube, and I still do some 720p myself. Then it still shoots a, a 640 by 480, the old school 640 by 480, 30 frames per second. So you got 30 frames per second for, the, for two, and you got the 15 frames per second, which might look just a little choppy. We'll take a look at that and see. Um, but it has a 16 times uh, digital zoom. I don't know what the optical would be, or we'll find out if any part of it is optical or if it's all digital. Ooh, check it out. So there you go. It looks like you got an HDMI cable here, maybe. I mean, that's fairly expensive just to get a good HDMI cable, and that looks like a really good HDMI cable, too. Definitely is HDMI regular to go on your TV. And you got your your mini on this side to come into the camcorder. So cool. You've got your old school type thing here. Oh, this is USB. Okay. I got out of there just so you can see it. So there is your, I guess your AV cord. Comes with, oh, okay, there's one battery. Oh, check it out. Wow. Comes with two batteries. So that's kind of a pleasant surprise. It comes with its own little case. Look how tiny. But very cute, That's, and it's, it's got good padding in it. Check that out. And there you go, such a nice little compact camera. It has, has a lens cover in it. I, I pulled it off when I brought, took it out of the box. It says 16 times powerful zoom, it says on here. It says F slash 3.2, F equals 7.36 millimeters. Okay, I don't totally, I'm not even gonna pretend I understand what that is. That is so compact though, best occur. CMOS sensor, it says up to 10 times more steady. I'm not sure because it's two times increase in sensitivity. Supports 32 gigs, full HD 1080p. We know it's only 15 frames per second though. So I guess we have a charger here too, okay. Charger. Install driver, install simple check, install magic photo manager, install magic video, easy SC. So these must be software packages that, you, that it gives you so that you don't have to go get a third party video. Now, I may not test this because probably I'm going to do with it, do my review with Adobe Premiere Pro, okay? It does have a pull out screen here. Check that out. A little piece of plastic over it. I'll probably take that off so we can see a really good representation of what the screen looks like. I'll, I'll, I'll not do it just yet. You got menu here, display left and right. Apparently that's how you navigate it. You got your HDMI there, power button. Okay, so I guess you turn the power on from here. Interesting. You got your photo button and you got your mode button to switch between photo and video, I suppose. There's gonna be your, uh, where you press to record. And on top you got a toggle button for uh, left and right. It's not, it, it, it feels a little, it's probably, uh, we'll have to see if that is, uh, I mean, it feels like it's just, it's either tighten or widen and probably not so much speed oriented, I guess. But it looks like that might be a microphone or it's a speaker, one or the other. Oh, you got your two microphones in front, my bad. And this would be a sensor, I guess, for either a light sensor, I guess a light sensor probably. So let's go, cool. let's just charge it up and let's see what it does. Well, on the bottom, you do have a, uh, Thing here and you got a place for your for your uh, card 
So I have a, I have like 16 gig card that I'm going to probably put in there. Okay, so there are some cards that don't work well with this. I was trying like a class 10 SD uh, HC. It didn't work worth a flip. It just messed up. I put just a regular standard. This may be class 6. Seems to work fine. This is a 640 by 480. So this is the kind of quality you're going to get. It's kind of low light out here. This will give you an idea. This is just a decently lit room, small studio. Here's a, a Walking Dead AMC <laughs> figurine. Honestly, the 640 by 480 is probably the best video that it shoots. I'll show you what the high def looks like, but that's 640 by 480. This is 720p. 720p. The pug. Hey, Nico. So that's what you get. Now, when you zoom in these modes, it's usually herky jerky, kind of. See how it zooms? It doesn't zoom smoothly. It's all digital zoom. There's no optical zoom to it. It's a little odd there. The blue light on the back blinks. Here's what our kitchen looks like. This you can see how some video looks as you walk through it. So there's not any, you know, optical. There's not really any stabilization. As long as you're shooting, shooting fairly still, this works well. If you're moving, it's, it's not the best video. This is like say 720p. And the colors are the colors change a little bit with the white balance. You can see it kind of goes to a yellowish tint. So I'm in auto white balance. I don't know, there may be some other modes I could try. So this is just daylight white balance, which looks pretty yellowish. Uh, but there you go. At least that way, I don't think you're getting all that kind of strange change in color. There's a fluorescent setting too, which is going to be, I guess, cool against this. This is very warm looking. Actually, fluorescent setting is a bit more toward the red, whereas the daylight is more toward the yellow. So here you go, you can see the difference. So if you're inside under light that you don't want to be changing all the time with white balance, you might get a better result with this camcorder if you pick one of the regular white balance modes, not an auto white balance. If it were a cloudy day outside, you'd get you know better color than this yellow. It's not nearly as yellow as this. There's the pug. So I'm sorry I'm not shooting this outside, I'm shooting it inside tonight. I'm back in auto white balance, which is a decent color, I guess. And I'm in a, I got, I set the metering to the center. Some aquafina. So you can, if you know what color blue that is, you get an idea. Here's some pepperoni. So my experience with 1080p or with anything at 15 frames per second is if you don't move much, it's not, it's not so hard to watch. If you have to move at 15 frames per second, you definitely get some like some jitter there. But here's how it, how it looks. There's Nico. And of course, once again, if you zoom in, it's all going to be digital. Kind of a strange zoom. It just it just blows the pixels up. So it's not a smooth zoom at all. If you're going to zoom with this camera, it better be with your hand. You know, in other words, you want to move towards something. Just so you can see how it might work for a vlog or something. I'll turn the camera around. I'll, I'll turn the camera around on myself. So this is how it might look if you're vlogging with it. Again, if you're not moving around a whole lot, get where, the, where everything seems to jerk around behind you, it might work okay for a vlog. It's actually not a terrible camera. It's very small. There's no doubt about it. It's very compact. Stereo mics on the front. Um, it has actually a pretty good voice recorder on it, and I did shoot some pictures with it. Okay, so I've entered voice recorder mode. I'm, I'm actually looking into the camera now because it's got you know microphones on the front. I'm going to turn it away from me for a minute. I don't know if there are microphones on the back or not. I was fairly impressed with the way the voice recorder sounded. I'm going to show you some photos over the top of it. So as I talk, uh, I did go into Photoshop. The photos are pretty, pretty decent. You know, the color is not accurate with this, but he think a $79 camera. Pretty nice photos though. So I'm just uh, shooting some photos here around um, my house it's at Christmas time. So you'll see kind of how it turns out. But I do, I'm turning the, again, I've turned the camera back toward myself. So I've got it facing me. Uh, the voice recorder, you know, if you don't have a cell phone and you're not shooting photos with your cell phone or with your, uh, you know, a good cell phone, 
or you're not shooting video, this could this could fit the bill. Seventy nine bucks, probably decent for uh, for vlogging. Um, you know, you just, it just depends on what level of quality you want and what your budget is. This is Jackson sitting in fairly low light. That's all right. Here's my cat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm walking around using no stabilization at all. Just this is just how it works. We'll get a look at the. Uh, There's the food. Here's my the wife Nikani. Hey world. Some berries in the trees. So friends, I'll let you be the judge of quality. I mean, uh, you know. It's not the best quality in the world, but it's probably doable. Again, it just boils down to how many dollars do you have. Are you looking for a beginner entry level camera? Not bad as far as that goes. If you can afford two or 300 bucks though, you, there are a lot better options. But uh, particularly the 480p, which is not totally dead. I mean, you can still see a lot of great clips, particularly older clips on YouTube that are shot in 480p, 640 by 480. 720p again not terrible the color representation is not the best in the world uh, 1080p as long as you've got it on a tripod or something or you're not doing a whole lot of moving it's watchable um but you know for me the one that shines is the 640 by 480 the uh, the colors there are color options so there's things you can do there's like sepia there's black and white there are some various effect things you can do with it i do like the voice recorder and i think the photos are better than i was expecting them to be so yeah, there are some good points about the Besticker, and then there are some, you know, some things that you could take issue with. Again, you just have to look up at what the price is. 79 bucks, I think, 80 bucks, you know, pretty good. If you can't afford a really good cell phone uh, that you could shoot and do this very various things with, or a camcorder that's in that probably $200 range plus, then, uh, you know, it's probably not a bad choice. Uh, it would be great if it had some sort of optical zoom. You're not gonna get that at that price point though. Uh, it doesn't um, it doesn't focus really well inside of probably about 14 inches or so. If you get closer to something, uh, then it goes sort of out of focus. It's sort of set to an infinity sort of focus. I would say outside of about 15, 16 inches. So if your photos are going to be a little ways off, that, that holds true for your video too. You don't want to get close to stuff when you're shooting video with it. So there you go. That's uh, it's not bad. Not a, not a bad little choice. Uh, again, it's it's for your economy type person who's looking to maybe just get into shooting video, uh, have a nice little voice recorder and a nice little photo a photography camera built into that. Uh, peace to all who watch. Subscribe to my channel if you like.